Hello and welcome to Controversies in Urology. In June 2010, the FDA approved a new drug for the treatment of symptomatic BPH. That drug is called Jalen, and it is a combination of 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride and 0.4 milligrams of tamzulosin. Both drugs previously approved for this disease. The study called the COMBAT study that was done to support this finding was a randomized prospective trial of the combination or either drug alone. And the study showed a statistically significant improvement that was greater with the combination compared to the other therapies, both in terms of reducing the IPSS score and improving the flow rate. So the question is, how, Im how much improvement really was obtained? It turns out that about 72% of the men getting the combination had at least a three or more point drop in their IPSS score compared to only 67% for the Avidart alone or for 62% for the Tamzulosin alone. So what does that translate into? Giving the combination to men with enlarged prostate will add about seven more men to get a significant benefit, which we consider to be three or more points on their score. Is that enough to give the combination to? Or would another approach simply be to say, let's give all the men with an enlarged prostate the Avidart and the, the other drug and wait and see how they do? If they don't do well enough getting one of the drugs by itself. In other words, if they don't have at least a three-point drop in their IPSS score, what would be wrong with then switching them to the combination therapy? Of course, many people for years have taken the following approach. They've started an alpha blocker, waited a few weeks to see if patients improved. If they did and they had an enlarged prostate, then the second drug was added. And then several months later, patients were given a trial of stopping the alpha blocker, since the main benefit is sustained in most cases by staying on the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. So that would be another approach. Something to keep in mind here is that in this study, the median prostate volume was almost 50 grams. So these are very large prostates. The average was almost 55 grams. In a previous study, looking at other combinations, the study showed that you needed at least a 30 gram prostate in order to get a statistically significant improvement by taking the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. So I think we have a significant improvement here that will help some men. The side effect profile indicates that about 7% more men will have side effects related to sexual function, which is the same number of men who are benefiting by taking the combination therapy. Fortunately, those side effects will go away if the drugs are stopped. So the bottom line here is, for a man that comes in with symptomatic BPH and an enlarged prostate, certainly he should be offered the combination pill as one way to treat his disease but it still is reasonable to take the alternative approach of offering him the 5-alpha reductase by itself and then adding the alpha blocker if the patient doesn't get enough benefit. And if he is on both treatments, then you can switch him to the single formulation. A question that's not answered or addressed is how long men have to stay on the combination therapy. Is it possible that over time they can stop one of the drugs, namely the alpha blocker, and simply remain on the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, the Avidart, in order to prevent other events from occurring, such as the need for surgery? I look forward to your comments.